دند وشنف مسمعي ما سراني في غربتي إلا حداء الدنداني Therefore, in today's episode, we will discuss the conditions that are necessary in order for this of La ilaha illallah to be acceptable to Allah Azza wa Jal in order that the person who says it benefit from it in this world and in the hereafter. If a person says it without these conditions, then this testimony will not be accepted of him. Now the scholars of Islam have derived from the Quran and Sunnah seven necessary conditions in order for this kalima to be acceptable. Now some of these conditions are a little bit overlapping, but the point is that put together they form a complete and lucid picture of what is required when you say La ilaha illallah. The first of these seven conditions is al-ilm or knowledge. You must know the meaning of La ilaha illallah. So if you go to someone who doesn't understand La ilaha illallah, if you go to a non-Arab who has no idea of Islam and you say repeat after me La ilaha illallah and he repeats after you, he will not be considered a Muslim because he has no idea what he is saying. He doesn't have the knowledge of La ilaha illallah. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Muhammad verse 19, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No, no, ilm, La ilaha illa Allah. Mean, understand the meaning of La ilaha illa Allah. Don't just verbalize it, have ilm with it. Also the Prophet sallallahu said in Sahih Muslim, as narrated in Sahih Muslim, مَنْ مَاتَ وَهُوَ يَعْلَمُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever dies and he knows that La ilaha illallah, there is no object that is worthy of worship except for Allah, he will enter Jannah. So a person must have a knowledge of what La ilaha illallah means. And the opposite of knowledge is ignorance. A person who is ignorant of the meaning of La ilaha illallah, obviously his verbalization of this testimony will be of no use to him. You must understand what it means. This is the first of the seven conditions. The second condition is that a person must be certain. In Arabic we say yaqeen. In other words, he must really and truly be certain of this kalima. Not just know what it means, but really and truly have yaqeen that this statement is true. That there is no object that is worthy of worship except for Allah. The opposite of certainty is shak or doubt. He cannot be doubtful. He cannot say, well, maybe there is an object that is worthy of worship. No. Neither can he allow in his heart at least the possibility of another object being worshipped besides Allah. He must reject that possibility in his heart. Any person who is doubtful of this, he has gone against the simple condition of La ilaha illallah of Yaqeen. The proof for this condition, or of the proofs for this condition, is the verse in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse 15. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا That the believers are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, and then they have no doubts. You cannot have doubts about Allah. You cannot have doubts about La ilaha illallah. Likewise, in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anni rasulullah. I bear witness that there is La ilaha illallah, no object worthy of worship except for Allah. And I bear witness that I, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa am the messenger of Allah. No person meets Allah having no doubt about them. غَيْرَ shakin فِيهِمَا except that he will enter paradise. So the person who says La ilaha illallah must have yaqeen, certainty. He must really and truly believe and not just the knowledge. There is a difference between knowledge and between actually believing in something. Believing in something is more than just knowledge. Therefore the person who says La ilaha illallah firstly must know what it means, this is ilm. Secondly, he must have the level of yaqeen. He must not have any doubts about the validity of La ilaha illallah. The third condition is the condition of Qabul or accepting the statement of La ilaha illallah. And the opposite of Qabul is inkar or rejecting it. So the person not just must believe in it, he must take it in and accept it, make it a part of his life, make it a part of his actions. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Safat verse 35, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ The Mushrikun, the Quraysh, the pagans, when they were told 
to say La ilaha illallah, they would become arrogant, they would not accept it. The opposite of accepting is to be arrogant and to reject. So a person cannot be arrogant to reject it, because a person might understand it, and might even for some way believe in it, as is the case with some of the people of the past. For example, for example, Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, he believed in the Prophet Sallallahu that he was a Prophet of Allah. But because of his ancestral pride, because of the fact that his father was to him more precious than Islam, he said, I will not leave the religion of my father. So to Iblis, Satan, the accursed Satan himself, does he deny La ilaha illallah? He believes that Allah is Allah. He believes that Allah is worthy of worship, but he is arrogant. He does not have this condition. He understands what it means. He knows it's true, but he doesn't implement it by action. And this is an integral part of La ilaha illallah, that you must accept it, qabul, and you must, you must not be too arrogant, too uh, arrogant, istikbal, we call it in Arabic, to reject it. There is a beautiful hadith here which summarizes this, uh, this concept very nicely, very succinctly. We'll take a short break and we'll come back and we'll discuss this hadith in some detail, inshaAllah. <laughs> Welcome back. We were discussing uh, the seven conditions that are necessary for the statement of La ilaha illallah to be acceptable. And we had reached the third condition, the first of which was knowledge, the second of which was certainty, the third of which was accepting this kalima. And we said there's a beautiful hadith we'll discuss. And this hadith is a hadith narrated in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. As we said over and over again, the most authentic book after the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. In hadith number 78, Imam al-Bukhari narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the example of the guidance and knowledge that Allah azza wa jal has sent me with is like that of a heavy rain. So the example of this guidance is like a heavy rain that falls down to the ground. It fell on a particular pa uh, land. There was a portion of this land that was a fertile ground, which took this water and gave forth plenty of fruits, dry and succulent fruits, both types of fruits. And there was another portion of it, which was dry, but it stored the water, and thus the people benefited from it. The people drank from it, and they gave it to their animals and irrigated their lands with this water. And there was yet a third portion of it, which was flat and dry. It was unable to store the water, nor was it able to take it in and give fruit. So here are three parables that the Prophet has given. And he said, this is the example of the one who studied the religion of Allah and benefited what Allah has sent me with. So he studied and taught to others. And also the example of the one who did not care about it, nor did he accept the guidance that was sent to me. Now, what is the meaning of this hadith? The Prophet said that the guidance of Islam or the guidance of uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, it is like a rain which comes down. Now the rain is the same, but the land that accepts the rain, the people that hear the message are different. Some people accept this rain to a very full degree, fertile ground. So they absorb it in and they give forth fruits and vegetables. They give forth succulent fruits that people benefit from. Others, they benefit but to a lesser degree. So they store the water, they store the knowledge, and they pass it on to others. They themselves don't benefit that much, as much as they should, as much as the first category. But they benefit enough to store it and pass it on to the next, uh, or to other people. And the third category of people are those who don't care about the rain or the guidance at all. They reject the message of Islam, and they don't care about this beautiful guidance that Allah has revealed to them. And they are like a flat and barren land. Neither do they absorb the water to sprout forth vegetation, nor do they store the water uh, as the second category did, such that people and animals can benefit from it. The point being that it is essential that you qabool, that you accept la ilaha illallah. You make it a part of your life and not that you reject it, you are too arrogant to take it because if you do, then this statement will not be accepted of you. The fourth